Hey, beautiful human, thanks for clicking on our conversation with Josh Richards. A lot to discuss with this uh, podcast maven, entrepreneur, just a great mind and a great human being. Looking forward to catching up right now. But uh, I got to tell you to subscribe. Even if you hate us, please like the video and leave your honest feedback in the comment section below. I read every comment and I will respond. I appreciate you giving us your time today. Okay, let's do it. Let's do this. Zach Hi, beautiful human. We got Dan here. Uh, I'm Zach, and we welcome podcast king, investor king, Gen Z king, Canadian gem, <laughs> Josh Richards. Hey. I mean, hey, that's an intro. Yeah, dude, it's pretty freaking wild to see the ground that you have paved since you were actually on our couch with a few of your friends about, I mean, what is it now? A little over a year ago or something. Yeah, about a yeah. year and a half. Yeah, I think that was, you guys must have been one of the first Sway interviews that we did. So that would have been right at the beginning. Is it fair to say maybe one of the first podcasts you, you, you ever did? Yeah, it might. It's either first or second. The only the only person I think that might have had me on a podcast. Tom first, Ward. No, I think it's Jordan Belfort. Oh yeah, the the Wolf of Wall Street, casual. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, we it's a weird one to start. I mean, it was it was a crazy pod to be my first, but uh, yeah, hopped right in. Well, like let's just rehash what because there's so much here to cover. Um, we'll get to investments and silly bands and an interactive football league in a second, and then obviously you're working with Mark Wahlberg again, casual. But the podcast thing. You don't just have a podcast with El Presidente, but you're also on WFAN. You do a lot of other stuff. Um, you're, you're on a lot of podcasts. So uh, why? Why has this medium been something that you want to take advantage of? Um, I One, just it adds so much depth to me as a person, and I think uh, also it adds depth to my – like what you see, right? A lot of the times you're always seeing like 15 second bits of me or you're seeing a YouTube video that's cut down to four minutes and it's the most like high intensity action packed parts. So it's like with the, with the podcast, people really get to see who Josh Richards is, or I think they get a little bit of a better feel of who Josh Richards is. And it, it just adds that, that sense of doing something more too than just being like a TikToker, right? It, it threw me into a different demo, which was amazing. And that was part of the goal. I mean, going and trying to branch out and get that male demo when TikTokers struggle with that, usually, um, yeah. that, that was my goal with that. Like going over to Barstool, obviously a very bro-y content area. It's definitely like in the college, a little bit older of a demo too. So like I'm reaching for a demo I don't have. I'm trying to step in. And then Dave does the same, like with collabing with me, he gets intro to a different demo. And you're shooting the with some of the best people to ever shoot the right? So, you know, with all due respect, at first, like, it was a little rocky, you and Dave, but it's gotten yep. really good. You've yeah, gotten no, more I, eloquent with your words, and you express yourself very freely. Yeah, so, I think that's that's the coolest part, is that just as the podcast has been going on, we've started to know, like, work out any kinks or, or difficulties that was going. We added a, a co-host, like, we brought in Brianna eventually, um, I, that was Dave's idea, actually. So credit to him. Um, and just always doing like these little things. And that's what I mean, Barstool is really good at is just doing this, like, almost like live plug and play where they're like switching shit out, they're bringing in uh, different guests, or they're bringing in different games, or they're, they're creating different types of content for the podcast, and, and they see how people react to it. And it's like, uh, as it goes on, it gets better and better. I mean, pretty scary to go from creating something that's 60 seconds to being able to talk unfiltered for an hour and yeah. everything you say is essentially historic record. Yeah, no, for sure. It's a, de it's, it's a mindset change, right? When we all film together and we've gotten in trouble for this before, but we often wouldn't try to filter ourselves, right? So we would be saying whatever we want when we filmed our vlogs and then just told our editor, we were like, yeah, just obviously cut that part out. Edit around And we it. thought like, we thought we had like this leeway of never uh, getting like exposed from that or whatever. But I accidentally uploaded a 27 minute raw footage clip <laughs> instead of my YouTube video one day. And, and it was just like all this stuff that we talk about in between cuts, like everything in that video. Um, I checked like social media, I think like 30 minutes after the video, because I knew it was like 
there was some drama involved. So I thought like, oh, this might get posted on some shade rooms. And I see like Keo walk out from uh, the downstairs and he's like looking at me through the glass door room and I'm having like a meeting and he's like pointing at his phone and kind of like, what the heck? Or, or like laughing and I'm taking it as like, oh, he likes my video. So I'm, I'm like pointing at him from inside the meeting. I'm like, ah, my man, like, ah, fuck my guy. And then I get out of the meeting, go on a shade room. Their recent 12 videos that they posted on their account were just clips from my YouTube video. And it was just like, I, I tap one of them. I'm like, I don't remember posting this. I don't remember leaving this in the video. Something is up. And yeah, it was, it wasn't a great day. So what do we learn from this experience that you need to be uh, on at all times that you need what, what, or you need to not. That I needed to hire an editor. I yeah. needed to hire an editor, bro. I, <laughs> I, I was, I was not a, a creator and an editor. I'm, I'm not David Dobrik. So I, uh. Hired an editor after that, and then that helped me a lot. Well, never, what, never posted something again. What do you see yourself as today? Like, do you consider yourself a creator at this point, or are you just an executive entrepreneur? It's getting to the point where I see myself a lot more as the entrepreneur than I do the social media creator. And I think for a really long time, that was kind of it, it wasn't a battle, it was just like which one was it necessarily going to be, or where was I going to find my passions? And I think that with the last year of working or last really like eight months of going crazy. Um, I, I found that to be the entrepreneurial side and, and to focus more on that and just like the content I can create around it too. And, and the opportunities it gives me to create just in different ways, like the production company, for example, right. When I go and uh, I'm like either hearing uh, pitches about shows or, or we're, we're creating a format and, and creating the show, like, that's still me getting to do my thing and, and create that content and hopefully either, you know, put a smile on someone's face or make them cry or make them do whatever. Just get that those reactions from people from from the, the, the content. So does a deal like that come about because you have a large audience? Is it because you have great show ideas that Mark Wahlberg's production company just needs to, you know, get going? What is it like? And do you like how how does that deal come to be? What is it built off of? Yeah, I think that a big thing is definitely like how I I position myself. I mean, I'm not holding myself to the same level I think as as a lot of these like TikTokers. I think that some of them think that they're like top and and honestly, they could take like a little bit of like an ego check and and just start really doing the work like I feel too many people in social media really grab onto that talent mindset where it's everyone serves me everyone's my assistant or lackey or yes man and and that's what happens to a lot of creators they fall into that and they don't really want to do the work they don't want to you know type up a deck or a doc yeah. or go go do the research and it's like that's what you that's what you got to do and I've been doing that so that's a little bit what was able to separate me and I think get people's attention like Mark and, and, and Archie Gibbs and the people over at Unrealistic Ideas. That only happened because of what we've been able to do on the business side when, and with Michael helping me for the last seven, eight, nine months. And, and by the way, I think you bring up something so important, right? Like that is what separates you from the pack, which is like everybody thinks these things just happen. But the truth is like. There's so much – there's like pre-pre-pre-production work that is yeah. creating these decks in addition to creating the ideas. It's like figuring out oh, how to yeah. convey what that is and, and, and sell it properly. I mean there's so much work involved behind And the amount of ideas that don't ever even – like no one will see the light. Yeah. Like, it won't see the light of day. You know what I mean? It will be six, seven of us that look at it. Someone spent probably an hour plus typing it up, doing work on it, and then it's like – gone and that's like multiple times a day multiple yeah. different you know what i mean so it definitely adds up it, i think that i think that there just needs to be a, a change in the mentality of the creator game and it's slowly starting to happen like you see people doing these really crazy new big things if it's you know my production company with mark or logan getting into nfts or there's just there's always uh gonna be like the future of the game and i think this is it hey beautiful human i gotta hit pause real quick to tell you about my favorite deodorant native it is not only the best deodorant out there it's uh, good for you, it's good for me, and it's good for the universe. You see, it's vegan, never tested on animals, plus they have plastic-free bottles now. 
How amazing is that? Plastic free Dio, baby. It is the present. It is the future. With over 10 cents that are guaranteed to make your nose dance. I'm telling you, native is for you. Hello. Try it out now. You'll get 20% off. NativeDio.com slash Zach. Go there. Risk-free shopping. If you don't like it, make exchanges. Make returns. Don't worry. Just go to NativeDio.com slash Zach. Uh, this is citrus and herbal musk, but I am a big lavender and rose guy. These are the scents, by the way. I also love coconut and vanilla. Oh, I smell delicious. So if you want to make people's nose dance and if you want to protect yourself, eliminate odor, also keep your sweat in check, Native is for you. NativeDio.com slash Zach. Go there. Uh, and yeah, use my name, Zach, at checkout too as a promo code. You'll get 20% off of your first order. NativeDio.com slash Zach. Well, I do uh, want to get into what the production, uh, what the what the future of a production company is, right? In terms of what platforms you're looking for, because mm -hmm. it, it has changed. Like you know, before, I don't want to date myself, but back in the day, you know, I've gotten two TV shows to pilot stage, and then I hosted two different pilots. None of them went to air to validate your point of how much work goes into ideas and TV shows that you may never see. Yeah. Ever, but there's actually footage of them out there existing. Um, so what is the future, right? And how are you poised to tackle that in a way that nobody else can? Yeah, I think that one of the things is where we want to place the content, right? I, I think a lot of people think production company, movies, TV shows, they think like instantly theaters and you're, you're, you're like on guide on TV going through like Family Channel. Yeah, Disney, long form right? legacy. Yeah, and, and I think what is missing and one of the coolest parts about doing this uh, production company is we're really going to be the hub or home for syndicated content on places like snap or, or formatted content on places like snapchat and, and selling to the facebook watches and youtube originals and going to more of that social media route that we see blowing up right now where i mean my YouTube gets more views than TV channels, right? Mm -hmm. Or or a lot of creators' TikTok videos get more views than any TV that's out there. So why not start putting it that content or, or placing that content where the eyeballs are, right? And, and actually start to, to see where that goes. So I think believe, that's definitely one. Do you believe quality content has the power to sway the way a platform works or has the power to kind of like build or establish a platform? I think content is a huge play in any platform so when when you're getting something of quality when you're getting that like it's bringing you back if, i mean if the content's quality you're coming back to it right so that's yeah. helping the platform and, and if you're continuously coming to that platform it, the content's working and and yeah so qu quality content definitely is but wouldn't quibi prove that that might not be true because i'm sure there's a lot of good stuff on quibi they just couldn't make it work but i think when you talk about Quibi, they were trying to do something that already existed. Like they, they were trying to create short form video content and that was kind of already TikTok. It's like they, they were, or that was already kind of like Snapchat, right? Like when you go to Snapchat and you go to discovery, there's all these shows, all these different series, all these like complex sneaker shopping, hot ones. Yeah. You have you, like originals, right? Why would someone, go and pay for that when I can just be on Snapchat scrolling through my stories and getting the exact same thing. Like those are, those are five minute shows or three, five minute shows on snap. And it's, it, it's there. They were trying to play, I think in a field that was just, there wasn't really a, a field to play. In. Totally. And also at the same time, like their, their argument would be, well, we have quality content as opposed to, you know, Snapchat might not be as quality as to ours. We have scripted content, we have unscripted content. Um, but, Ultimately, like it was just a, a streaming service of content meant for people on the go, launching at a time where we literally all stopped. So, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. And the story, was... and they spent all their money. They blew all their, 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 all their shit on ridiculous stuff that didn't matter. Yeah, I mean the the like budgets for the shows and everything. Yes. It was crazy. Like the amount of money they were throwing into it was ridiculous. Josh, what kind of content are you guys looking to create? Um, we're definitely looking to focus on the unscripted content, but we we have the ability to do both and, and definitely want to do both. I think docu series are going to definitely be a huge one and, and a a big focus. Wanting to do stuff, you know, in in the the sports world, 
focusing a little bit in in the mental health space for sure. Want to get something done in there with a docu series. Um, but yeah, fascinating. I really look forward to the future of this, and I, I want to get into sports because obviously it matters to you. You're investing in an interactive football league. What yeah. is that? Why do we care? Why do we need yeah, this? Fan, fan control football league. Um, I mean, it's it's the first ever pro sports league that is allowing the fans to really have control and a say in what happens with rules and who who's on the actual field what plays are being called and like as you start to make more and more play calls you you get more of a carry even like when you go and vote down uh what the coach should be pick between the next three plays like for for your team so i think that yeah it, it's like this is every dad, every son, and like that relationship or, or that daughter, dad, daughter, mom, mom, son, like son relationship where they're like watching TV, yelling at the, the screen together. Like I did that growing up. I remember me and my dad being beside each other, yelling at players or coaches. And then you get up and you start clapping when the play's right. And you, you're so invested in it. And half the time you're, you're telling them like, I could have done better than you. Like I, I would have known the play to call. Well, now you can do it. Right. So those times when you're like complaining about a coach's play, it's like that's on you now. And and you actually get to make those decisions and see like, oh, am I actually smart enough to, you know, make these calls or it, it, I think it just it makes it really fun. So there's less thinking on the part of the athlete or the coach, right, because they're essentially just executing what their fans want. Uh, I mean, I think that it's it's definitely a little bit of both. I, if there's, you know, the coach is throwing up three plays that they're, they're deciding the three plays they possibly want to run. And then you go and, and decide out of the three or um, if there, there's a scramble always in football, right? So that's where you get to see this, the skill of players when they got that, that improvise like that. But I think, I think the league's awesome. I think what it's doing is, is super cool and, and where it's, where it's going, it's definitely changing uh, the, the digital age in sports. It's, it's going to be wild. That's so fascinating. And like rather like gnarly, right? The idea that you can control who's on the field and the destiny of uh, so an crazy. athlete. And, and like great players too, like Johnny Manziel is in the league, right? Like imagine like calling Johnny Manziel's shots. That's ridiculous. Now what is it? Is it like an app you have to download and you kind of click the plays and whatever whatever one gets the most votes, that's what they do? Yeah, I mean there's there's the app and then I think there's also a way to go through Twitch and do it uh, while, while watching the live stream. Oh, that's so cool. Why silly bands, yo? Silly bands, uh, like, do you remember silly bands growing up? Are you even old enough to remember silly bands? <laughs> yeah, man. I uh, actually have them on the wrist, but oh, um, cool colors. It matches. I, I, I yeah, I gotta have. I, I didn't even mean to do that, but it really does. Like, it's actually the perfect like colorway for my hoodie. That's crazy. <laughs> um, <laughs> I remember going to the schoolyard like on a day-to-day -day basis and trading silly bands like pokemon cards it, it was a recess game you would go out you're trying to get the multicolored or, or tie-dye or one with the sparkles in it or something or glow in the dark i remember those ones were always really hard to get i remember sitting there trading like my sister only had one silly band and she felt bad and like she was sad she was a year younger she is a year younger than me and uh i went into this big group of everyone trading and I grabbed her silly band and went in with it and traded and got ended up like getting five or six of them and able to give her to her at the end of recess and she was like stoked about nice. it but it, it's just such a nostalgic thing for me so uh, why do we need them today I know it's nostalgia for you but is there a craving like is, is there collectible silly bands like what, what is the trend yeah, that course. we're calling yeah, I mean, I think collect it definitely can lie in that category of like collectibles. There's been a lot of silly bands made where it, it, the deal got canceled after, or so they're like super hard to find, or they started manufacturing and they were only able to get like a thousand bands made, and then for some reason production stopped. Right, <laughs> so there's all these super rare ones or or these bands that have kind of gotten this value to them because of the, the a show they're on or the story behind them or you know like recently you, you see people uh in, in the kardashian family starting tweeting about it again so i definitely think that there's there's a space for it so like what is this do you have a piece of silly bands are you an investor are you an advisor yeah, it was an m&a &A. so we actually went in and bought uh part of silly bands <laughs> yeah cool um, yeah is there different? Obviously, you have different investments, right? So, 
What is the interactive football league then? Uh, that so that's that's more of an angel investment, right? That's coming out of like my own capital. But yeah, we either are doing it's either a mixture of an angel or soon getting more into like uh, the fund doing fun stuff. So that would be sick. And then finally, like we'll get advisories, but usually we're also investing. We we love to invest when we get advisory as well, just because we want to actually have skin in the game. Like yeah. we want to, we want to care about it, right? We want to invest in something we're passionate about and, and want to take seriously. So, well, Josh, has your audience started to change after all these new, you know, investments and things you're getting into? Because I would assume before you were just a bunch of young girls because you were a TikTok star, but it seems like you completely shed that image. Yeah, I mean, that's that's part of the goal. I definitely have had a little bit of a demo change. It swung into the male demographic a little bit more. Like, for example, the podcast has more guys subscribed to it than girls. So my podcast has a larger male demographic than it does female, but it, it, it's definitely a crazy, it's a crazy change because I'm used to, you know, going out of, of a restaurant and seeing 14 to 18 year old girls usually and, and like the screaming and, and all that. And then recently it's been changing. Like a couple of nights ago, I walk out of uh, BOA and it's just this like fat group of guys. It's only guys. <laughs> there were no girls at all. And I'm like, I didn't even think anything of it at first. I was just like walking by like to leave the restaurant. Didn't think they would know me. And like they all turn around and they're like, Josh, what a goat. Like you're, you're, you're a legend, man. Like, yo, take a picture. I'm like, this is sweet. This is wicked. Like to have, it's just, it's just cool to have like guy fans or, or fans that I would seem like, oh, I could be like boys with them. You yeah, know what I mean? With them. Yeah, exactly. They're acting the same as me. Like they're probably in some frat or going to college or just living like some normal life stuff. So that that's always cool to see that that demo change and been the craziest one was when I was in Miami and uh, this like 35 year old guy, maybe maybe like 38, 40 starts like walking up to me, just like staring at me, dead staring at me at this like party get together thing. I don't know. This was like a while ago and um, starts walking up to me and he's staring like dead into my eyes. I'm like, oh, boy. Like, here's another Sway story. Awesome. Josh Richards gets jumped by 40-year-old man at Miami party. I was like, this is great. I was like, this is going to be so awesome. And then he comes up to me. He's like, you're Josh Richards? I'm like, yeah. Who, who are you? And he was uh, – I forget what the guy's name was, but he, he ends up, like, saying, like, he was a huge fan of the podcast. He had seen the stuff I was doing Barstool. And that was, like, the first time uh, anyone had come up that was, like, in the mail demo from, from Barstool, like, from that uh, podcast. And I was just sitting there like, Oh, okay, perfect. Thank God. As long as I'm not getting my ass beat, like I'm happy. <laughs> but it was, yeah, it was. A, it, it's definitely a cool, cool little little change. Why you? Have you asked yourself that throughout this journey so far? Yeah, definitely. Um, I've been, I've been confused before, or kind of wondered why. Like, why is it me that's you know got this opportunity and blown up, and not like one of my friends, or or why I didn't someone go go pro in a sport in my town instead of me like make it out for social you know what i mean like there's always these like it but the other thing is i knew that this was going to be me since i was seven years old like i've known i josh richards would be a name that everybody knew since i was uh in a bunk bed right so <laughs> for me it's like something i've i've always and, and that sounds so weird but it was like every night before i went to bed as long as i can remember I say seven because that's about as far back as I can remember doing it. But um, I remember going to bed and, and praying for like two things when I was seven years old every single night consistently. And that was that my name, Josh Richard, would be known and I was going to be more than just a normal kid. Like I knew it. I had this feeling in my stuff like you couldn't tell me otherwise. At, at, the fir at first, I thought like maybe it was like a sports. I was going to be a pro sports player. I thought I was going to be an NHL guy. But I always knew that name would be out there no matter what. And then the other thing I prayed for when I was seven was like that Ben 10 watch was getting made on my wrist when I was sleeping, but that didn't pan out. So I think, I think God blessed me with the other yeah. one. Um, <laughs> and by but, the way, yeah. like, that's not crazy. I, I, I totally understand that. And I, I know people who have felt the same way, you know, like when, when, I think there's, it's, it's not for everybody, but sometimes when you're younger, there's a defining moment where you realize like you, 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 you I can think back to a moment where I realized when I was 
maybe eight or nine that I was going to be on the radio and that's all I wanted to do in my life. And that was right. dude. And from there, all I did was manifest it in different ways, you know, yeah. whether it was actively working towards the goal, there was always some sort of, whether it was praying or speaking it or, you know what I mean? There's yeah, always no, something being put out there into the universe. Yeah. I want to ask a question about the new male audience that you've kind of gathered. Does that change how you create and the content you put out there on your YouTube channel and your TikTok? Yeah, definitely. So as I start going down, I mean, it's something I've done so many times in my career is pivoting, right? Yeah. When you start to one, I'm, I'm growing up as, as a person and, and as an individual. So my likes and, and what I want to post and what I want to stand for is also changing a little bit because of that, right? I'm, I'm just like growing up. So I think as I grow up, though, my fans are also growing up. So I need to be able to make sure that I'm like staying entertaining for them because I've had I've had fans be a fan of me since they were 14 and they're now 18, right? Like same as myself. Like I started this when I was only 15, 16 years old, so 14 years old. So, I mean, they, they, they've grown up with me in a sense. And that's like, that's why I always got to be careful. I always got to make sure I'm pivoting or, or moving on in my, my content. And that's why I'm trying to focus a lot in the sports world right now with doing like you mentioned at the start WFAN doing Carter and Roberts uh getting in the barstool world uh I mean my second TikTok account has become a little bit more of a sports page where if I'm just like joking around about sports betting or or talking about uh takes that I have with with players and and whose team I got winning or or whatever it is is that why you've kind of stopped doing the TikTok I know you did one recently but it seems like there was a big gap did you pivot away from yeah, that? Yeah, that, that recent one wasn't even tea talk. That was just like a sit down video, of Sway Assumptions. That was just obviously there were a lot of assumptions going on around Sway. And that's kind of like one of those main sit down videos that a council will do. So I was like, oh, this is a perfect time to whip out a Sway addresses rumors like surrounding the name. Uh, but tea talk was, it wasn't shut down because of that. And honestly, I think tea talk is probably one of the series or content that I could make adapt really well to the male audience and, and that they could like actually watching, even though it has to do with TikTok. Um, and, but the other thing is, is I'm not going to just like desert my audience I already have. So there's yeah. that side to it too, where it's like, I'm so appreciative for what got me here. And I need to make sure that I'm never the guy that's like turning my back on my, my own supporters or, or turning my back on the people that got me to this point. Right. Like I got to, make sure I'm still still supplying them with content they want and and finding that like happy medium or medium. Well, that's what I'm, uh, you know, I, I have been wondering. It's like, you know, how much do you want your, your fans to buy? Like, we got to buy some silly bands. We got to buy some Annie Energy. We got to buy a blanket. I'm like keeping an active list. I'm now going to join this interactive football league. Mm. Um, but, 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 there, but it's really not that. These are not this is not an endorsement deal for you. So it's a different level of commitment between you and the brand. Correct. It's not like you're pushing tummy time tea or something. No. Yeah. It's, it's a lot more authentic than that. I think, uh, there's a huge message that we try to push out every single day or, or myself and, and Griffin, uh, especially with Michael and that's financial literacy, right? So yeah. every single investment we make, no matter really like, I mean, smart investments when we're investing, that that's us like teaching that or, or I guess preaching that uh, action, right? We're, we're, we're going and actually doing it. We're not just like sitting here talking about how we're, it's important to invest your money or that you should not spend whatever, we're, you know, we're being authentic. So every time we invest in, in companies, it's, it's spreading that message and really teaching, hopefully our, our fans or giving them some context or, getting them at least interested right at least now they're hearing about investing in angel and venture and all this uh and and maybe they even if one out of ten one out of a hundred one out of a thousand like three people out of all my followers <laughs> they they go and look up investing and get into it or they start learning about how to education like they start learning about money then i've done a, a great job aren't you guys into a bank or some sort of like a bank for younger people like is that step. accurate i i invest in step yeah yeah that is a bank for young people and it teaches financial literacy which by the way i, I totally agree with and yes obviously people should know about what it means to be an investor and in angel investing um but like you know, you know 
I, let's start with like what it means to have a debit card and how to pay your taxes. And or, or even more important, 401ks, like, Roth IRAs. Exactly, IRAs. 401ks. And I'm, that's why we invested in LendTable. Like, that was one of our first ever investments was that they're, they're a 401k matchup company. And it's like the fact that kids don't understand that even if they spent three less dollars a day on their favorite coffee, right? They, they don't go to Starbucks. They go and get it at, I, I don't know, some cheaper – coffee place dunkin donuts or something and and they they save three bucks a day them putting that away like when you talk about compound interest when you talk about the money they're going to make off that when you talk about 30 years down the like that's how people have accounts when they're 50 that have like a million dollars in them two million dollars in them and you have like a fat retirement saving yeah. but people don't think about that three dollars they're like ah it's nothing right like but they justify that every single time and, and it's like over and over and over and they don't start thinking long term and it's the same with the creator world and what i'm trying to do to change it is like the traditional creator or the traditional brand deal for creators is post something i'll give you ten thousand dollars or whatever the number is and and then it's over and, and then that brand continues to do well they they you know got boosted off their likeness why would they pay you ten thousand dollars if they weren't going to make more than ten thousand dollars off that promo totally everything's going to be margin like by 80 percent at a minimum so, right like yeah so when you think about that then it doesn't make sense for you to be doing those brand deals when you can own the product yourself or you can create it or you can go in on the back end and actually get equity like some of the best advice i was ever told by by ashton kutcher was if i had taken equity in every single brand deal i ever did i'd be a billionaire by now and Sure. Like the, the reason he's not is because of uh, taking cash and that it, that attraction that creators have to the instantaneous like dollar. So I read that for, from Forbes that you make like one point nine million dollars last year or a year before or something like that. You were on the list of the highest paid TikTok stars. How much out of that are you putting into investments? Like what do you and, and I mean, let, let's not even talk about. Roth IRAs and, you know, discs, whatever you're putting your money into. I'm talking more about like businesses, tangible like brands that exist in the world that are producing something. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm, I'm doing a lot of it. I, I try to keep enough cash just so that I can, you know, buy food when I need it, keep the lights on and pay bills. Like <laughs> I don't really believe in having a bunch of cash on hand or in a bank account because even if I have my money in a bank account, I'm still losing money as, mm -hmm. as inflation and, and, you know, the dollar and everything like that. Like it's, I think that's also one of the most like miscommunicated things that parents like teach or, or leave onto their kids is like, don't spend your money. Right. It, they say like, save your money, save your money, save your money. And like, that's, that can be, that can be as dumb as spending. It's, it's, you gotta, you gotta know where to spend your money. You gotta know how to spend your money. You gotta know how to use it. Right. If you just save your money, it's like, it's not it's not really that great well the house wins right so if it sits in a bank account all it's going to do is just have fees be hit against it and oh. it's not going to move well nope josh what do you think when you see some of these other social media stars like get a big check and they go spend it on a lambo um i think that they're going to be the the creators that will will forget in a year probably and, yeah. and like that's the sad truth honestly if, if you're taking a check right now when you are in this point of your career where like you're you're growing still or you're like no one knows how long social media life lasts right you have lightning in the bottle that's a fact no one can no one can tell me that like oh i'm gonna last three more years here's a fact why no one can say that you don't know who's gonna pull up one on you you don't know when you're gonna get canceled you don't know what's gonna happen like this world is crazy right it's the wild west so when you're taking money like that and just blown, like, I mean, you're just, you're kind of just asking not to be financially stable <laughs> after, after social media. Well, not financially stable, or you get sucked into this cycle where you have to like create a certain type of content because you feel like that's going to generate money so you can survive because you've blown everything on stupid material things. Yep, definitely. Well, I mean... Or, or you just, you, you just start to sell out, right? Like your, yeah. your paid becomes a billboard. And then what happens after that is, oh, three months down the line, You're everyone dead. just stops. Yeah. Everyone just stops messing with you and, and liking your content. Cause all they see is ads now and they're, they're tired of it. Right. So it's, 
it's definitely something that like people got to start paying attention to is like what they're doing with their money. And I think that's, that's why I'm I, like Griff, myself, I, the Sway boys, Michael, like we're trying to pave that path a little more in, in really saying like, look, equity is the way to go. Start being smarter and owning what you're touching as a creator, because as soon as like the acting world did it right, how many actors have alcohol now? Yeah, everybody's got a tequila brand or a vodka. What? But, but our I'll, favorite is long drink, actor, isn't it, Josh? Our favorite is long drink. Long drink is our favorite. Is the best. Miles yes. Teller has done it beautifully with Evan Burns. But um, Chef's Kiss. That that like, it's like they they it slowly starts to adapt, right? Like the first person does it. And there's the Casamigos story and all, all this, and then then the world comes to be right like then then they see after the oh there's there's been three billion dollar exits okay now we can go and do it. it's like people are scared right they're, they're scared of that new and slowly i think the creator world will adapt um but if if you get on it now i mean you're gonna you're gonna be a pioneer of it instead of someone following but, i said being well, i think you could say the same for tiktok houses like you guys came and the hype house was there and now everybody tried to do it but it's like nobody cares about it anymore yeah a hundred percent i mean it, the thing is, is like when we go and invest, we're getting headlines for investing, right? As as these social media uh, TikTok stars investing in companies, like what? This is crazy. This has never happened before. In in six months, eight months, a year, press isn't going to go out about. There won't be the oh, a TikToker has invested. Like no, because it's not the first, right? That's like what I mean. We we try to do. We try to create these these huge what the moments that people are going to be shocked at. And that's like the production company, right? Now that I've become this first uh, social media creator or TikToker, I don't, I don't know, to, to open a production company with an A-list actor like Mark Wahlberg, the next time it's going to happen, it's just not going to get as much press. People aren't going to, once it's done once, people just don't care as much anymore. Well, that brings me to a very interesting point, which is not all creators are created equal. So the concept of everybody deserving equity is false. Some people deserve the margin friendly ad buy, correct? And for sure, like, you but know, I mean, I think I think that goes into knowing. So how we like to do it, right? Is like we follow we follow license endorse own this thing called Leo, right? And it's like you got to make sure you're doing all three and. And that there, there's like these buckets that are being filled, let's say with money, right? Like you want these buckets to, to be kind of equal or, or maybe I like to personally have my bucket on, on the longevity, like in owning things. Um, I like that bucket to be a little more full, but we, we, we're always trying to make sure, you know, we're, we're doing a licensing deal. That's, that's like for our likeness and we don't really have to do a lot with it. Right. Like, Oh, they, they go and do it. We're making money off of it. It's pretty easy. And then there's the brand deal, which is like, it's it's not really a lot of work. Maybe a little tedious to do to do a post every once in a while, but you, you're you're getting that instant cash. And then what we do with that cash is we're able to supply the other bucket, which is this long term bucket and owning things and yes. funding projects. And so it's definitely and, and and there's deals where we get equity and cash, right? So there's the both as well. I, I think that it's just knowing to to really fill those buckets and, and follow that. I think that's what we've we've done in it, and it works. I also think you made a really good point when you talked about you don't know how long the uh, social media thing will last because, I mean, there was obviously this huge boom over the summer when everyone was stuck in their house. But now, yeah. like, half those people, you know, the people you saw every day, you don't even hear about them anymore. And it's just, you know, five, six months later. Yeah, I know. And the thing is, is, like, you probably forget about the other half of them that, you know what I mean? Like, there's probably a whole other half that we don't even remember about at all. And yeah. it's like, it, that's the crazy part. Every summer this happens. Every single summer, I've been on social media for like four years now, and I've witnessed it. There, There's groups that blow up in the summer. They're the talk. Everyone just wants to talk about them. They're huge, right? It usually lasts for four, four months after the summer, maybe two months after the summer. We saw this difference and in, in, in even bigger blow up this year because of COVID, obviously. But um, it, it's usually that summer and then a little bit following, and then it's like a reset next year. And it's like on to the next group every single summer. It's just like brand new group, brand new group, brand new group. And then there's a few people that stay, right? Like there's the, the phase group that's been able to stay for a while and, and the, the Paul brothers. And, and then now Sway has been around for two years and Hype House has been around for a while. So you, you, you start to see like slowly there's going to be groups that fall off and new groups are going to start. And 
yeah, it's it's definitely a little bit of that history repeats itself. What do you think of accountability in the creator field? Because there is such a personal relationship, I think the screen and the phone is so intimate and personal. There's a real relationship that forms with, you know, the person on the other side of the screen. And there are some creators that for some reason exist and continue to exist without even having to acknowledge in some cases grave wrongdoings, right? Like right. like 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 legal wrongdoings. Right. How does one rationalize that? It's just like such a broken it's yeah, I mean it's just broken. Like the whole idea of like cancel culture and then but you got to hold people accountable. It's all messed up because what ends up happening is you see these people that actually do something terrible, right? Like they, they actually did something not great and should be held accountable for it. And they get to walk, right? They get to slide. Well, in some cases, then, they just walk, but like thrive. Yeah, yeah. And, and they actually somehow come out of it like as this like victim because everyone's just like trying to can't, right? But then what else you see is like then people get canceled over literally – the silliest things Nothing. like something that makes no sense at all should not be an issue every single person does it it's like a, a or a, you know what i mean and it's like how how are we supposed to justify holding anyone accountable when we let these people that actually do terrible things just walk because they're social media and yep. influencers and we like them more and then when an influencer does something that's not really that bad but, you know, maybe there's just a group that doesn't really like them. There's just, you know, they just have haters. They're going to be like, yeah, we can cancel them. And, and that's how it's going to be just because they're not as liked or they – it's such a it's such a messed up uh, space for that. I, I And I don't know if it's going to change. I just – it's crazy. The, the, the scale of social media justice is so skewed and uh, – Yeah. yeah it's, I mean everyone thinks they're right, right, as well. That's the problem. Well, but but then there's you have some all these situations people behind their phones that are like apparently everyone behind their phone is like some model citizen. I've never met so many people that have never sinned in my life than when I've been on social media. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Everyone is perfect on social media, <laughs> except for except for you, <laughs> except for you. You're the only one that isn't. That's what you got to know as a social media influencer. You're the only one that's not perfect. Everyone else is. This WFAN thing is a pretty big deal. I, I mean. I know WFAN because it is one of the strongest AM radio station signals in the world, but it's also the most iconic sports radio station to, I mean, it's like WFAN, WEEI in Boston, um, maybe the, the, the fanatic, like the fan in Philly, like there's very, there's only a couple historic radio stations in the sports genre and WFAN leads the back. So yeah. How, why does Mark turn off, sign off on this? Why does Carton want you there? What, how does this happen? What did Michael Gruen do? Yeah, no. Uh, so I had talked for, for a while. It had been probably a good two months, three months, where I really had been telling Michael and uh, just the people we work with that I was I was really wanting to get into the sports world. I was wanting to dive in more. It's it's what I grew up doing. Like when I was when I was a twelve year old kid, you could have named a sports player. And I could have read you his stats for the last three years in, in hockey, right? I could have told you how many goals, assists, minutes. Like, it was it was crazy. That's what I did. So I just want to get back in that world is what I was telling him. And then with uh, my, my PR team, uh, Michael got talking to them. And they, I believe, made the intro actually to, to Carton and Roberts. Um, Scott on the phone started talking with them. We just kind of like vibed. It, it was a great talk. And then... We did we did one hit on on the radio. We did one thing or one segment together, and then like it, it just went well. So we continued it. So is that a long term goal? Do you want to be a Dan Patrick? Do you want to be a Colin Coward? Like, what's your deal? I love the idea of being uh, like like Pat McAfee show is sick. Right? Yeah, like I, I, I would that. consider him in the same vein as Colin, but he does his own version of it. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Like I think just viewed in in like the sports entertainment social media world is definitely somewhere I, I want to be. Um, it's just, it's going to take time. It's like breaking a, I love doing this, but it's like breaking a stigma, right? There's stigmas around TikTokers that they, they are like 
at first the stigma that sway broke was like the party thing we i think we talked about it when yeah. we came on the show last like the first time when the, the whole group of sway came on we were talking about how there's no tiktokers that are authentic they they care all about their brand too much they don't they're not honest and transparent with their fans they tell them one thing and then me and all the boys will see them two days later doing exactly what they preach not to do right so <laughs> our our whole idea at the start was like we're going to be authentic as we can and show everything. And that might have low-key made us a little bit not authentic because we started overdoing it. But uh, it's like that's that's just part of the importance is, I think, being that authentic person. Well, and yeah, and to evolve as you evolve and to mature as you mature, you have a long life ahead. And you clearly yep. plan on living it somewhere in the social media spotlight. Yeah. So if, if we were able to be hella authentic then and, and break some stigmas, I'm thinking we can do it again with uh, – TikTokers and not being able to like play sports or know about sports. So, well, Josh, speaking of being authentic, what do you learn from working with Dave Portnoy? Because I mean, he's probably the most authentic person you'll ever meet in your life. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, I think probably the the easiest lesson to learn from him is like don't ever sugarcoat anything, right? It might as well be as upfront as you can with people, or or it, like. Just, just give it to them how it is. Kind of tell the truth, and, and that's what I respect about him is he's gonna he's gonna state his opinion and and what he thinks about something, and he really does not care if you think differently or who you are or how much money you have or what like position you're in or who like he, he doesn't care. He's gonna tell you what he thinks. He's open to to the combo about it and open to maybe you convincing him otherwise, but probably won't happen. <laughs> are you ever worried on the podcast because i actually do i, I watch the videos because i think they're great i mean youtube right, together is yeah. awesome are you ever worried because i know there was the bryce issue that happened in the show that you know there was a little drama are you worried that the podcast could cause rifts between you and other people or you just have to kind of say you know this is the show we're doing this it's gonna happen so like for me personally I, i'm someone that has thick skin right and it's like when i look at social media and what I do in social media, like part of my image and career is like the drama section, right? T talk. That's always been something that's like been very established with me. And, and I've never been someone that seriously has reported about it. Right. I'm not like they're saying this person needs to be canceled. They're terrible. Like they went and, and did this, this and that. Let me break the news. I was always the guy that was talking about subjects that were already in the public eye. They were, they were like information that was already out there. And then it was really comedic, right? It's either making fun of the situation, trying to bring light. So when I go on that show, it's like, oh, I'm, I'm cracking jokes. I'm, I'm being, I'm trying to be funny at least. And it's, it's not supposed to be taken as an insult or, or a dig. And I mean, I get made fun of on the podcast all the time, right? I'm not sitting there like tearing up about it. I'm, I'm just like, Hey, that's 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 the game. What does it mean to have companionship during everything you got going on? Like, does your relationship with Nessa grow stronger through all this? Is it harder? Um, I mean, definitely stronger. I think for sure. I uh, like having somebody that you're able to connect with or, or talk to, or you know, like at the end of the day, sh share your story or, or just vent to is definitely important. And I, I mean, I have that in her. I have that in in people like Jaden and and even like Michael and Griff. I think the only difference is I work all day with Michael and Griff. So sometimes it's like, Hey, I need a, I need a little break from you boys. <laughs> Do you feel like you're being the best version of yourself every day? Uh, I think that I could definitely be better. I think I could always be better. I think that that's, that's why I'm here on this earth, right? It's like to improve every single day and become a better person. So uh, as long as I, I uh, keep doing so, I would say, yeah. What do you learn from Michael Gruen so far? What's your biggest takeaway? Biggest takeaway. Wow. Um, I mean, first off, I've pretty much learned everything from Michael Gruen. That guy is like a book of knowledge. It's it's unreal. But uh, I think the the importance of equity and and entrepreneurship and really really uh, even more than that, the importance of of a business partner and, and having someone that like has your back fully and, and will ride and die for you. Um, and, and like, like you can just trust fully in your work. I think that's something that not a lot of people are able to find in social media or, or just any industries really is that, that work companion that they can fully, fully trust and know, you know, they're never going to 
take advantage of you or rip you off or, or do some shady deal. And, and that's like Michael for me. So I'm, I'm very fortunate to find that. I mean, having that person really changes the way you navigate. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. yeah I mean, it allows you to work. I feel like a little bit more stress free, except Michael makes up for the stress with just like, you know, yelling at me or whatever. So <laughs> I feel like his haters on the internet, uh, they only hate him because they ain't him. Right. Yeah. It's a little, little bit of a hate us cause they ain't us type energy. Yeah. Uh, Josh, how much, how do you and Nessa ever discuss like how much you should put on the internet? Because I know you want to keep it private, but at the same time, when you do post with Nessa, you see how big those numbers are. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's, it's something that I don't like to think about really, because I don't want anytime I'm posting with friends or like, uh, especially like when it gets a little bit more complicated to, to be posting in making that the relationship, right. Mm -hmm. Making it transactional. I think that just, it, it just like wrecks the beauty of it. I try to like, if me, you know, me and Ness are just like hanging out, doing something goofy and, and I like put on the camera and film it. Like sometimes I just have like videos that we'll, we'll film together that never get posted. Right. It's just like a draft that goes in my videos, but sometimes they will be like hella funny. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna post this one on, on the internet just because of this, that, and the other. But like, for example, when, when we were like, I think just goofing around singing or something, uh, and I, and I was videoing it and then like, I'm raising the camera and all of a sudden all the dogs just start like humping each other, <laughs> all three of the dogs, like buddy, my dog is just like on the bottom and she's like trying to like play fight with Ness's dog. And then Ness's dog just like gets right on his face and just is like face humping him. And then the other dog joins in after. And it was just like, what the heck just happened in the span of two and a half seconds on this video. But yeah, just like moments like that. You are a very, very busy man. I know you have things to do. Time is money. Uh, there's silly bands to sell. Um, True. There, there's a lot of things going on. So we'll let you go in a second. Uh, final thoughts, Daniel? No, I just think it's cool to see how, you know, you guys were all on the couch here a year and a half ago, but it's it's crazy to see, like, how different everybody's lives kind of went from that day. Yeah, um, it is definitely crazy. I mean, back then, Jaden was a social media influencer, right? And, yeah, and now he's huge. I, yeah, he's a rock now star. He's a rock star, yeah. And, I, I mean, you, you go back and you see, like, I don't even know if Quentin was there yet. Quentin, was Quentin, no. Quentin wasn't here. Noah wasn't here. It, it's like it, it was a whole different world. It's crazy. It's definitely crazy. I think I, it's cool. It's it's actually awesome to see that all the boys have kind of been able to take that push that Sway gave us or that leverage Sway gave us and utilize that to benefit their careers, right? Whatever it is, if that's like me going into the entrepreneurial world, Jaden having a in-house distribution system with his fans for music right and then bryce becoming like the the entertainment guy the like that's who he wants to be right that youtuber i think it's like it's cool to see everyone going down those paths you are a very smart man uh thank you for sharing thank your you. energy and time I, I think our show would benefit from uh josh richards coming in and like doing an overhaul of what we do and how we oh, operate. Yeah. yeah i think you could really uh can change some stuff around here i mean we're no triller but uh you know, might have to come in do some do some operating. Yeah, we have no <laughs> we have no budget to pay you anything. Uh, oh, perfect. I, I know Triller <laughs> gives you a car and a house. I uh, <laughs> like like In and Out maybe. Right. Okay. I mean, man's got to eat. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, I, I really appreciate you taking the time, dude. Uh, you have a lot going on. What is like what is what's left in your day? What do you have next? Um, it's it's calls. I I like usually on today's a tuesday right yes if i'm mistaken yeah tuesdays are our podcast days and uh like i do i do founder calls so if i'm meeting with founders to invest if uh i'm meeting with company ceos uh, whatever but it's usually a lot of like meetings what's the next trend what, what, what's what's going on what's bubbling in the streets mm. uh i think that there's going to be a new type of influencer that is seen very soon. And it's like not going to be an influencer that's a f influencer because of like their abs or because <laughs> they're like dancing in front of a camera really well. 
um, it's it's going to be an age where we start seeing these influencers pop up that are actually in a, in a, intellectuals, um, and and I think that's going to happen because of Clubhouse. So, mm, look at that. Yeah, that'd be cool. You heard yeah. it here first, friends. I I agree with you. I think Clubhouse is going to be something big. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, it is already big, but you know, it's still very a private community. It's not. It's not what it's. Yeah. It's not what it's going yeah. to be at its peak by any means. No, for sure. It's going to be crazy. Uh, I appreciate your time, dude. Thank you for talking to us always. And yeah, thank you for having me. A special human being, you and Michael Gruen. Love to you that's... both, dude. Oh thank... yeah, thank you, man. Thank right. you. I appreciate you. I'll uh, talk to you later. Later, Josh. All right, later, guys. Talk Peace. to you guys both. Guys. Peace. Hey, beautiful human. Thanks for watching our full interview. But I get it. Like a full interview is a lot. So we got a clips channel. We don't expect you to watch the full thing anymore. So we just gave you the highlights. Please subscribe and uh, notifications and all that stuff. Okay, cool. I love you.